We got a couple more people joining our group, but we're getting ready to go. So uh, we'll make introductions. My name's Chris Mern. I'm an architect and urban designer at Morrisburg here in Charlotte. I've been here for about 12 years. Came here for the uh, urban design program, the MUD, at UNCC when the, they first had a program in 2010. So urbanism is very new to Charlotte, I think. There was a lot of great ideas. And uh, hopefully that'll be something cool and worth all this noise that we're gonna hear right now. But um, one of the big things when I came to this city was just the welcoming of the community. And, and this tour really, I think, focused on that. We've got Kevin Kennedy from Cluck Design and his group that originally started in 2005, uh, where he started his own place. And then I think um, uh, Spoke Easy in 2011 came on board. And I first met Kevin because I brought my bike into his shop to get it fixed, and he was the one answering the door. So it's a very cool, they've done amazing work for advocacy in the community for bikes and for bike safety. Uh, they host a weekly ride from the Spoke Easy that's just uh, east of here of Charlotte uh, down the trolley line. Um, and it really can't say enough of what it does for the community. Um, so Kevin, if you want to introduce your team too. Sure, yeah. So it is very weird that we're an architecture firm and a bike shop. Um, but uh, it's been a really interesting doing things like this where we can talk about architecture, ride bikes, and also helping with infrastructure that, uh, that really combines design and bicycle infrastructure. Um, and so primarily I'm an architect, but also work with the bike shop. Uh, and also Davin um, is an architect with Cluck. Uh, and then Greg is many things at the Spoke Easy. He is our, one of our bartenders and he also leads our rides. So this is Optimus Hall. Uh, do you want to? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so we kind of took some fairly new infrastructure to come from inside the loop and around the loop and outside of the loop is what we just did when we crossed the tracks here. Um, and as we were stopping, we were, that was Alpha Mill. This is Optimus Hall. Um, there are several mills that kind of follow the tracks um, into Noda. Uh, this building was seemingly abandoned for many years, um, and Davin, uh, yeah, so, do you remember the date of when this was renovated? Oh, renovated? Just started, yeah. Yeah, it, it started being renovated in, uh, I believe it was 2019. Okay, yeah. And so there, the Duke Energy, the power utility has 
their innovation center here, and so they're one of the main tenants. And then most of the rest of this building uh, is food hall. And so Cluck has done six of the food stalls within the building. We weren't involved with the shell, but the food stalls, and there's a pet food store. Um, candy shop. Candy shop, <laughs> bookstore in yep. there. Um, and the whole building is under the historic landmarks tradition. So, um, like in terms, it's kind of unique for a factory like this. So everything inside has to be reviewed by them because there are certain credits involved. Um, so everything has to be reviewed uh, kind of locally by the city as well as by the state. Yep. Yeah, and so and a little cheat sheet here because I, I'm terrible with names. So William Holt, Jesse Spencer, and Charles Worth started setting out with this mill in 1892. So this was this was a mill again, you know, back in the day, these were all cotton fields. So everything kind of came in, it got loomed, and then it went to our cross tra roads at Trade and Tryon to go out to Charleston to be shipped to Liverpool to be made into clothes. So prior to the Revolutionary War, everything came in from the fields and then went to England. So the big thing with the mills, like this was originally called Highland Park Mill number one, and then we're gonna see High Highland Park Mill number three. And the reason there's such a distance between them, uh, Park number two is down in South Carolina outside of Rock Hill. But the reason there's such a dis distance between them is because in the 1890s, there was a lot of rebellion. So this was kind of trying to control the groups and the mill towns associated with them that they couldn't talk and they couldn't rise against and kind of get that worker group mentality. Um, these were really founded as the blue collar neighborhoods of Charlotte. So um, if you were on my tour, we went into the, the South End and then we got Dilworth and Wilmore and that was more the white collar. So Dilworth eventually comes into play when we get back into Noda, where he took the energy that was coming from Highland Park Mill, uh, number three, and kind of building onto that. So we'll, we'll see, uh, unfortunately, a lot of it's kind of been torn down from the original settlement from 1903 at Highland Park Mill three, but you can kind of get the, the idea and then the craftsman, craftsman style that's so strong there. Uh, and that's where the, what, uh, the name of the tour came from with renovating the front porch. So if we go all the way back to the Greeks, they started it, you know, with uh, portico shares and, and some of their stylistics, and then it came over to England, to the Americas, into the South as being uh, less of a, a grandiose show of power, but more of a community building element. And a lot of that stemmed on the back of just, we have heat in the summer. When we look at what front porches mean to America, there was a lot of them built on plantations, and it really became that community node that we know today. It was originally just, you know, a structure out front. So when the evening uh, breeze blew in and you were out of the fields and cooling down, whether you were the owner or those that worked on it and the slaves, that they had a place to just, just be outside and start form community. Um, if you guys were part of the uh, speech yesterday morning at 8 a.m., they started talking about, you know, streets really killed front porches and really killed you know, the streetscape because you've got exhaust, you've got noise. You, the kids can't play in the front yard when people are going 45 miles an hour down the road. So um, there's been kind of a re-envision, um, and especially with Cluck and some of their work that we're gonna see that has brought these front porches back to prominence. And they've really, when we get into Noda, you'll see that it, it's more of a welcoming community because they have so many of these front porches. And then through their work, they're building these, these classic third spaces and from the original third spaces and food halls uh, in uh, Germany where all families are welcome. This isn't where you go and get tanked with your buddies. This is welcoming everybody. I take my two youngest or young kids, uh, ages one and two there, and we just you know try to duct tape them together and see what happens. But it's just, it's a fun community experience and, and you meet people and all of that. So that was kind of the origination of this tour. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more when we get more into um, Highland Park 3 because they've got the craftsman style houses because originally there were 50 houses built here but now you can see uh, through through time it was not kind to them and I, I don't think any are standing. Um, there might be a little bit of scale so you'll see as we're, we're going to go this way and stay towards the rail um, but you'll see a, a very structured grid right here for about four or five blocks that this road kind of came in and cut up but that was the original Milltown settlement around the 1900s. Um, so I think that I think that gets it for the most part. Oh, and also the rail. That was the big part. So on the other side of this, we'll go right next to the light rail, but on the other side of that is a spur for um, Norfolk Southern, I believe it is, or Southern Railway Main Way came. So when you came out of DC in the Northeast Corridor, this was your entry into Charlotte. And so that's why this one's a little bit less because of the time frame. but the next mill that we see with Highland number three has a very grandiose tower and because it was kind of showing the allure of Charlotte and you know, you have arrived after your long journey coming out down through Richmond and Raleigh and eventually here.